This is Joyce Tice. It's June 2018 and I'm talking to Dave Garrison and his sister Nan Garrison. They grew up in Mansfield and I'm going to talk about their growing up years, their friends and so on. Now Dave, you still live in the house that your parents and grandparents lived in, is that correct? It is. We're on the fourth generation now. Fourth? Yes. Oh, because your kids are there. The young men are still there. And uh, where do you live, Nan? I live in Kent, Ohio. Now, uh, what years did you graduate from high school? Well, I graduated in 1964. And I graduated in 69. Okay, so you both have a little bit different memories because everything changes. Uh, every decade people grow up in a different place and you have half a decade between you. So either one of you can start and tell me some of the things you remember about Mansfield that uh, you're fond of remembering. Okay. <laughs> Well, I really enjoyed growing up on East Elmira Street. Uh, we had great friends, uh, Lee and Nan Messinger, Beth Ann and Carol Sanford, and Linda Penno, who was probably my best friend. And we played a lot at each other's houses and just had a great time. Um, we had sometimes summer games in the evening where every kid in the neighborhood, you know, younger than us, older than us, would get together and we would play kick the can or hide and seek. And we'd just hang out until it was time to go in. It was great fun. Well, we didn't have so much traffic back then. You probably even played in the street without much danger. That's true. <laughs> and you had bicycles to get around town? Oh, yes. Lived on our bicycles. Now some of the things, some of the activities that were around, there was uh, the skating rink, the bowling alley. Mm -hmm. Where else uh, did you go to those and where else did you go? did go to those and also the swimming pool. Uh, my friends and I lived at the swimming pool all summer long. Um, sometimes we were there three times a day. We'd have uh, lessons in the morning, then we'd be there for open swim in the afternoon, and sometimes they were open in the evening for open swim, and we'd go back again. <laughs> so we would never seem to dry out. <laughs> right. No, you, you must have been you wrinkled. Your yes. toes and fingers must have been wrinkled. Sticky skin from the, from the chlorine water. Yes. Oh, right. Right. So, uh, Dave, what, did you, what was your growing up here like? Oh, similar, although uh, most of the kids in the neighborhood when I was about my age, there weren't very many. Most of them were younger, mm -hmm. and uh, I pretty much worked with father around the place and did little machine shop things. We did you know, gun repair and uh, oh, some small machinery repair and worked in the garden and mowed the lawn and just tried to, tried to learn a bunch of adult things. And you still, you've got, I just was going by your house today, I noticed you've got a really nice big barn out behind your house still. Mm, it's full. <laughs> but, but not of animals. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, just like my barn. Mm -hmm. Yes, they do fill up. Um, so that was where you had your shop and so mm -hmm. on? Yes. Well, now, your families had a lot of um, involvement in Mansfield's business community and so on. Uh, can you talk about that a little bit? Well, I think grandfather originally was the principal of Charleston High School and he started uh, selling insurance on the side to the young men who were going to graduate and get married and basically it was 300 to 500 dollars which would pay for a decent funeral which is all it was supposed to back then. And his name was? Cecil H. Garrison. I think it was in the middle edition was Henry, wasn't mm -hmm. it? Yep. Yes. Cecil Henry Garrison. And uh, he moved here. I'm not sure exactly why, but his brother, younger brother Merle, I think lived here a little earlier because I think he went to school. He went to school here in town and stayed. They were from Job's Corners area? Yes, Job's Corners. They, uh, just a couple of farms up from... Uh, Job's Corners on the Bailey Creek Road. Okay. And uh, anyway, after a while, Grandfather found that 
teaching school didn't pay that much, and uh, 50 cents or a couple of dollars he made selling insurance were much more profitable, so he gave up teaching school and went into the insurance business full time. And he was for many years. Well, I don't really know exactly how many years he did this, but he was what was called, he was, he was a member of what was called the One a Week Club, and he worked, or he sold, or he represented the Equitable Life of Iowa Company, and he was just a few weeks short of 45 years selling insurance for Equitable of Iowa. Now, I think he'd sold before that, but he claimed at one time that he was the, in the, the original group of people that had been in the start of that program. So every week he had at least one insurance policy uh, wow. written on somebody, and we add that up, it's quite a few policies. There weren't exactly that many people, because every once in a while he'd get a little short and business would be bad and he'd write one for me, so <laughs> I have a bunch of little thousand dollar, five hundred dollar policies <laughs> that he wrote. Well, there's all kinds of ways to win contests. <laughs> That's they, true. They didn't care. They didn't care as long as he sold a policy. And used to get all kinds of presents. In fact, I have the first one, which was a fountain pen that he'd gotten in 1920. And then I think the year after that, 1922, he'd sold over a hundred policies. And he got a, a growing, very thin, pentagon-shaped case watch. We still have that. Wow. And on the back of it, it has his name and why it was presented to him. Mm -hmm. And I think in the early 50s, he had a ship's strike clock. And then uh, there was oh, a, a what? A ship's strike clock. It, it, ship, it uh, struck the bells of an of a ocean-going vessel. You know, they changed the, the watch every four hours on board a ship. Oh. And every half an hour they add a bell, so they don't, it doesn't strike more than eight times. After, after it strikes eight times in four hours, then it starts uh, a half hour later. Is it uh, still working? No, I had it uh, taken apart to be cleaned, and it's a little unclear now who was doing it, but it, it couldn't complete the job, so its its pieces are in a uh, you know a couple of boxes. And I think they're still in good shape. I don't think anything's broken. But and after that, he received uh, I don't think a silverware or set of silverware and and uh, china and so forth. He said, well, they didn't have too far to get it because one time when he was out there visiting the company headquarters in Des Moines, they had this upmarket jewelry store on the ground floor in the building. So. Oh, right. They just went downstairs to yeah. do their shopping. Yep. So yeah. we've got all kinds of silver trays and silver coffee pots, silver teapot, you know, all this stuff, all engraved with G for Garrison. And... Uh, I think it's real silver too. It, it is. Is it? Plated. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. So automobile uh, dealerships also get, you know, they have a lot of contests and prizes and commemorations like that that they get. And I don't know, businesses still do that so much or or uh, what? But uh, it's nice that you still have them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She got the ones without the G on them, right? You, I. You take the silverware that didn't have the G, because. Yes. So I kept the one with the G on it. <laughs> well, siblings all, always have to figure out a way to split up the family <laughs> yes, items. The family well, and he had multiples of some of this stuff, uh -huh. so it wasn't that hard. <laughs> and, uh, I think about 1959 or 60, father quit uh, working at Ballard's, and he went and worked for grandfather for a while. And the idea was that when grandfather retired, father would take over and continue the business. So that's the story there. But like I say, I don't know exactly when Grandfather started selling insurance, but it, would, it was back when he was in uh, uh, charge of the, the high school. So um, who took over the uh, insurance agency after your uh, family? Uh, Albert E. Hat Page took over. He bought it. Okay. And I went from him to, uh, oh, was his son-in-law's name there, Bob Cooper. Oh, okay. And then it just 
it just kind of took on a life of its own and it doesn't really exist now, but it, it just kept getting bought out and merged in with other companies and, mm -hmm. you know, it just, it's just like, you know, pouring water in the, in the watering trough, you know. Now, uh, when you were growing up, uh, probably were still having the Mansfield Fair. Yes. Mm -hmm. You remember the, going to the Mansfield Fair? Oh, yes. <laughs> well, tell, uh, tell us a little about that. I mean, did they have a carnival? I mean, I, I usually, vaguely remember. Usually there was a carnival there, and uh, depending on some years, they had some that were kind of rough and rowdy and <laughs> engaged in bad practice and had a lot of a lot of people that didn't act very well and and other times they had uh, you know, pretty nice family entertainment. And I think that stopped somewhere around 59 or so. I couldn't I, tell. I, yeah, somewhere around there. I can't give you an exact date. Was well, there anything else you'd like to say about your growing up here or your family's involvement in the community? Well, you just had yesterday uh, and today the uh, celebration of 175 years of the Baptist Church, and your family's yes. been very involved in that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Especially mother and mother and grandfather were the, the two people in the family that spent most of the time there. Grandfather was on the trustees uh, quite often, and maybe even permanently. I guess I never, I never asked Bruce to look it up, but uh, there were many references to him being uh, on the trustees committee, and he ushered quite a bit. I remember that. Mm -hmm. Was he uh, treasurer sometimes too? That could be. He was a charter member of the golf club. That was 1928. Okay, Quarry Creek Golf Club. Yeah, Quarry Creek Golf Club, and then uh, basically, I think he was treasurer there until he died. I remember one time. It was the only time I cut open a safe. Uh, some. Uh, I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> I was getting ready for church, I think it was, and they called up and told him that somebody had burglarized the, the golf club and they tried to get into this safe that probably weighed a couple of tons. It was like so wide and about this high, and they tried opening it up with a piece of pipe and a claw hammer. <laughs> and all they did was succeed in ruining it so you couldn't open it. Oh, so my. I had a bunch of chisels and a little cutting torch. And we put a bunch of sacks in the floor so they wouldn't start a fire and wet them down with water and torched part of the door where they'd hammered it, they'd peened it over uh -huh. and then cut a little rectangle where the, the dial and the handle were and pulled that out and when that happened then you could reach in and pull out the, the bolts that held the door closed and then, and then we could open it up and I, I have no idea where the thing went after that. So you're a bona fide safe cracker. <laughs> well, I got away with it once. <laughs> it was interesting because they had, it was a grandfather's little office. It was a large closet, and it had just cases of liquor, and they didn't touch it. They, they stole a couple of glasses of soda, because I guess they got thirsty. Uh, oh, and the burglars. The burglars, yes. yeah. They, they, for some reason, they didn't go after the liquor. I mean, they could have... Been out of there in three minutes with several hundred dollars worth of booze, but they just left it and tried to get into the safe, which had maybe, I think they told me he had like 50 to 60 dollars worth of small change. Uh huh. Oh my. Yeah. Uh, what year was that? Well, let's see. It would have been, I don't know, maybe 62 to 64. Okay. Right there. Okay, you were just a high school. Just a high school senior. I was still in high school. Right. At the time. Well, you were telling me uh, something about Edwin Coles. Uh, we were just talking about him a little while ago, mm -hmm. editor of the newspaper. And, oh yes, I, I think he was the last person that uh, I knew that uh, at Quarry Creek anyway that played with wooden shaft golf clubs. Did you spend a lot of time out there? I used to caddy for grandfather on the. It was a, a night of the week. I think it was. Tuesday or Monday or Tuesday night, something like that, afternoon. They had a league and they would go to each of the local courses, like Tawan, that was probably the farthest. And there was uh, Corey Creek and then uh, I'm trying to think where else it was. Over to Wellsboro? Yes, Wellsboro, that was the other one. 
I don't think the one in uh, north of Wellsboro there, uh, I can't think of the name of it, River Valley, I don't think that was around then. Uh huh. But we went to at least three, maybe four, and uh, I'd get to talk with the old man, and I didn't mind that. I, I thought they had a lot to tell. That well, that's why you have so many stories. Mm -hmm. You see, he talked to the older people. Mm -hmm. yeah. Some of the people uh, I went to school with years ago down at Penn College, they were just confused or frightened of older people. Mm -hmm. And uh, I wasn't because I, I lived with them. We had, mm -hmm. I think the oldest person I lived with was uh, Fanny Watson. And uh, I think she was born in 1869. Wow. Buried up here in the, sure. uh, the Watson family plot. Mm hmm I figured the early 70s, but uh, according to the tombstone, it said 1869. Wow. <clears throat> well, we're getting to the end of our time limit here, and uh, I really appreciate your talking to us. I know you have a lot more to say. Uh, Dave, always, he always has new stories every time I talk to him, <laughs> and I have learned a lot from him that I would not have known. He asks me questions and I have to go figure it out mm -hmm. and then I learn something. So thank you very much for sharing your memories with us. You're welcome. Thank you.